Deck Pass Live presented by Xfinity comes to you from Central California where we are wrapping up the Tier Pro Swim Series. We're on the campus of Clovis North High School in this beautiful aquatic complex that is on a high school campus. And not we've got the main competition pool here, but Caitlin, we've got two competition pools. I just cannot believe it. Two 50-meter pools at a high school. I, I woke up this morning and I was like, Wait a second, I'm at a high school, two 50 meter pools that are absolutely beautiful, s stunning. So yeah. thank you, Clovis, for having us for this fifth stop on the Tier Pro Series. Yes, I'm Jeff Cummings, <laughs> joined by Olympic gold medalist Caitlin Sandino. And last night we were talking about the Olympians that were on display and mm -hmm. some of the big names that are starting to make their na their selves known yes. in time for the 2020 trials. Brandon Fisher and that, what an amazing hunter breaststroke he had. You're still excited on I'm that. I'm still excited. I'm just, I mean, it's my event. So yes. <laughs> I, I'm still thinking about how he was able to turn that around. And now we right. got another name to think about yeah. in 2020. So that's going to be exciting. And today in prelims, we had some big names. We had Olympians. We had Kelsey Dahlia. Mm -hmm. in the 50 butterfly we also have um, south africa's brad tandy in the 50 yes. free he was a finalist in 2016 right and right. then we got a lot of up-and-comers who we might be talking Definitely. about soon you know out of all the pro series i'd say you know this meet probably has maybe a little bit less as far as the big names but that's so exciting for these up-and-comers and you know we talked about a little bit earlier you might not see him at 2020 but 2024 could be quite the possibility so it's yeah. neat to be able to follow these swimmers and see the progression and you know as we mentioned yesterday clovis has had a great start for a lot of athletes and pretty amazing to see that the future is bright for usa swimming which year after year it seems to be the case and in the year before the olympic trials i think this is the time to start to make yourself known <laughs> you don't want to do it you know obviously i remember katie ledecky did that in 2012 like what was it two months before trials she popped out a really good 800 free and everybody was like who's katie ledecky and then she makes the <laughs> olympic team but make yourself known now get yes. the get the comfort level that you can do it and then 2020 really explode so well, i'm really excited the to experience see that. the more you can race the more you can race against these big names mm -hmm. the less intimidated you'll be and there's the more swims that you get under your belt having this type of competition i just think really pivotal for for any athlete but you know especially in swimming where it's you're staring at seven other people and you don't want to be afraid of them right so as we have talked about a lot throughout the pro swim series swim squads are yes. always very important that yes. friendly competition among the four teams that are vying for that ten thousand dollar bonus they'll go to the cherry of their choice and as she has from the beginning camille adams is leading by a significant margin over connor yeager elizabeth beisel and maya dorado and i understand that if connor yeager and elizabeth beisel's teams win every event <laughs> and camille wins no events that either one of those two connor or elizabeth could win is that possible? Is that, I don't know. Are we saying it's pretty wrapped up or are we saying that there is a chance? Camille doesn't <laughs> lose. I'm sure she's not just conceding <laughs> the that. Mathematical yeah, chance. Mathematically, <laughs> she could do it. She, I think there's a chance, but <laughs> we just have to, you know, wait until the final final race and then we can figure out who is going to do it. Yes, and they'll be joining us tomorrow. We get to have two of the four captains here, two of our favorite ladies in USA yes, Swimming, Maya Dorada and Elizabeth Beisel. Thrilled to have them on. They're always so much energy, so vivacious, and I know we've been looking forward to this all weekend. Yeah. Yeah, and Elizabeth's been real busy out of the pool, so I can't wait to hear yeah. what her life has been like. Cause she is just—I see her on social media all the time, and mm -hmm. and she just doesn't she doesn't have any resting periods in her life. She she wants to be out there and be active, and be and that's good. I mean, she was just recently at the Make a Splash Clinic and and really making a name for herself mm -hmm. there, and the kids love her and. They're going to love her when they see her on deck. Yeah, and I wanted to point up, you know, we've been talking about the different charities that these captains um, are playing for. And Camille, she's playing for the Jesse Reese Foundation. And the day before the meet started, we had two swimmers, uh, Mallory Comerford and Kendall Stewart, that went to a local children's hospital on behalf of the Jesse Reese Foundation and delivered joy jars, spent over an hour with children fighting cancer, encouraging them and their families. And to me, it just warms my heart so much and be able to express my gratitude to Mallory and Kendall for going and being able to spend some time with Mallory yesterday she absolutely loved the experience and loved yeah. being able to share this joy and you could tell it truly made an impact on her heart um, and it's it just makes me a very a very proud swimmer to see these athletes continuing on and, and really not just you know scratching at the surface with these foundations really diving in and being a part of them right and it means a lot for the kids but yes. as you said it means a lot to the athletes to be yeah, able to kind of goes both ways give a little bit of, mm -hmm. of joy into their lives 100%. when they're dealing with this this 
terrible disease right. and having to fight that. Yeah. Well, I know they're Kelsey and Kendall. They're going to be very busy this summer. And um, we actually have our guest today who's going to be very busy he this summer, is. too. He's going to be traveling around <laughs> the world. Um, he was last year the head coach for the U.S. for the Junior Pan Pacific Championships. And this summer, he's going to be very busy heading up the team at the FINA Junior World Championships. And just very recently, our guest today, Billy Dowdy, got to head up the team at a recent training camp in Colorado Springs. Here's a little bit of that. Hey, I would have your equipment and gear ready to go. Getting ready for that main set. We got the rhythm now. We got the routine. Hey, last one. Last fast hundred. Here we go. And Billy Dowdy joins us here, the head coach of Dart Swimming. Billy, it's great to have you. Thank you so, so much for having me. So you're the Davis Aqua Darts Racing Team. That's what Dart Swims for. Correct. Okay. And you have the, the Davis, the Davis Sacramento area is huge. How many swimmers do you have on your team? Um, you're around about 350 kids. Wow. That's a big undertaking. It is. <laughs> <laughs> but to see all those those bodies in the water probably makes you very happy. Yeah, it's great. The the year-round team is one component of what we do. We actually have about another thousand kids that swim recreationally with us. Ooh, so wow. we're a pretty large overall program, but the year-round component is uh, is enough work in itself too. Right. How do you, you know, you're obviously out in California, you swim outdoors, your your <laughs> swimmers outdoors. As a coach, you're on deck. So, uh, and I'm sure a lot of coaches out there do the same thing. How do you stay cool on the deck during swim practice, uh, especially in the intense heat of the afternoon? It's pretty similar. Our area is pretty similar to here. So we're hundreds yeah. in the middle of the day. <laughs> yeah. um, so our primary workout is every morning. Okay. Um, so we're training 5.30 to 8 in the mornings. Um, two days a week, we train two to four in the afternoon. Um, and we have to make adjustments to practice. We mm. have to change it to more lactate work, and mm. uh, and we're not able to do quite as much aerobic work. The pool actually could heat up to 85, 86 oh, degrees wow. by the afternoon. So you change it up a little bit to make yeah. it for the kids. Wow. Yeah, because yeah, it's really important for them, too, because they're, they're really working hard. You're just standing there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just getting my sweat on. <laughs> but you're originally from Alabama, correct? I, I, I kind of hear it. You hear the twang? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Mm -hmm. So what brought you out here? Was it for this team specifically? It was coaching. I actually okay. started coaching with Powell to Stanford Aquatics. Amazing. Um, and so I uh, married a California girl and kind of locked myself into the California area. <laughs> Not a bad like compromise, bad place, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's very interesting. California girl, Alabama guy. Was there? Yeah. That was, must have been a very interesting connection you guys had there well actually undergrad she swam at duke and i swam at clemson so okay. we had some interesting background together mm. um but uh yeah it was it's definitely a, a interesting mix that is great so we talked about you having a very busy summer you're going to be the head coach for the men's team at uh fina junior world correct yes. and you were head coach last year at junior pan Pass. actually i was an assistant coach your assistant coach yeah okay. i was a head coach at uh mel Zay jack oh, the, where wow. the u.s traveled and then i was assistant coach in uh, fiji oh. well uh, wow good stops How yes. these? yeah it was, it's been a good year <laughs> yeah, yeah and, and budapest i've heard is very very beautiful uh, everyone i talk to says it's fantastic so i'm gonna try to stay a couple days afterwards and really check it out well we're free if you need like a water boy and a water girl <laughs> yeah that would be mean, great we can kind of do anything yeah i'm, I'm free to travel <laughs> with anybody we're welcome to come i'm not doing anything that way no i think we can Just make give it us, give us a call <laughs> all right so as a, as the head coach right now for junior worlds the team hasn't even been selected yet they selected them at nationals so kind of what responsibility do you have right now in pre prepping for this meet? Uh, we've got a conference call in about a week to start running through all the details of uh, themes and uh, how we're going to try to organize everything. USA Swimming does an amazing job with all the prep work. Mm -hmm. uh, we already know the hotels. We already know the, the commute back and forth from the pool. So, you know, they kind of set me up for success. The, the, the detail for me is going to be in the final last weeks or two. But, uh, yeah, they, they provide all that info for us. It's great. And one of the athletes who potentially could be on that team for you is athlete you see every day, Luca Orlando. Correct. Now, a lot of people uh, are probably wondering this. He tied for third in the 200 fly last summer at Nationals. He had this big breakout swim, which would have qualified him for Pan Ams, but yes. he turned it down. Correct. Correct. To get this chance to swim at Junior Worlds. Right. So what was right. behind that decision? Well, um, he's a 17-year-old boy. Um, and so with Pan Ams, the only opportunity would be to swim that one event. Right. And at this point in his development, we really felt like uh, training for an entire summer to focus on one thing was, was not really in his long-term success. Right. Um, so we kind of just thought it would be better to go for the junior, stay on that end at this mm -hmm. point, and, and hopefully have multiple swims. That would be really cool. So last night here in Clovis, he won that Hunter Butterfly down right. to the last stroke. We got really actually have video of it, and we're going to take a look at it. Um, and while we look at it, I just want to just kind of get an idea of what what makes him such a good swimmer. 
Um, he's doing a lot of things right right now. He's training really hard. He um, he has a good focus on the details. Last night we worked a lot on uh, on stroke counting. He actually lost one stroke per lap both directions. Yeah, he's fourth from the fourth from the top here. He comes in at the turn, and he's mostly known for his 200 fly, which we'll talk about in a second as well. So, um, um, what is what is the, the idea for him on this last trip? Um, really, it is. We've been working a lot on the stroke count for him, is making sure he doesn't spin when he gets uh, when he tries to increase speed and acceleration. So, like, like I said, he was one stroke less than he was uh, a week. Uh, Mel's Ajax, mm -hmm. uh, both directions, and uh, the the rate didn't actually change. So he was able to maintain his stroke count and stroke rate throughout the end instead of decelerating at the end. Yeah, that's really amazing. So um, as we said, his best event, 200 fly, and he right. had that amazing swim in Vancouver just a few weeks ago, 154.3. <laughs> were, were you surprised by that? <laughs> it's not going to sound great, but no, I actually wasn't. Okay. And I actually thought he could go a little faster. Oh, Interesting. amazing. Um, more in the tank. Yeah, more in the tank for the future. Um, Vancouver was a great meet, but um, that meet, second place finish was, I think, a 2.02. Mm -hmm. um, I think if he has somebody to kind of push him through the middle, mm -hmm. I think there's there's more in there for later in the summer. So, obviously, there has been talk, even last summer, with comparisons to Michael Phelps. Um, and I'm sure the two of you have talked about all that. How do you kind of temper those expectations with him? Yeah. Uh, we just let him be a 17-year-old boy. There you go. <laughs> I mean, we're, we talk a little bit about that concept, but uh, we're just trying to get better every day. And, and it's the same reason we're not going to Pan Ams. That we're, you know, big picture concepts. You know, we're going to some other events and, and we're going to make sure that, uh, you know, he's able to go to high school dances and mm -hmm. that he so can hard. still be 17 at this point. Right. How right. old was he when you started coaching him? Uh, he was 14. Wow, so great. So you, Dart is doing very well this summer. You've got uh, actually Chris Weiser, who was part of Dart before he went to Arizona. Correct. He's going to be going to Pan Ams. Yep. Uh, so you've got a couple swimmers who are now doing very well internationally. When you started coaching in 2009 with Dart, did you kind of imagine this would be happening 10 years into your time with them? I mean, ultimately, I think you always want to envision that happening. Um, but uh, there wasn't even a single junior national qualifier when I arrived. So yeah. it's, it's come a long way. Um, and I thought I'd kind of made a mistake at first uh, when I took the job, um, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's turned out great <laughs> since then. So That's kids, amazing. the kids, parents, the community have all bought in. It's been great. Congratulations. Much yeah. success. Much success to you, not just locally, internationally. <laughs> yeah. I, I know the junior squad's going to do so amazing in Budapest. So and, excited. And, you know, I just keep thinking about the last junior world where we had people like Reagan Smith who just right. had that big breakout and now is right. just one of the leaders of the senior team. So I think we're going to be seeing a lot of a lot of those athletes doing that in 2019 and getting ready for 2020. It's exciting. It's exciting to see what the future brings. Yeah. Definitely. Well, we're, congratulations. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to be watching Luca tonight in that 200 fly final. It's going to be very exciting to see Sounds him great. in person. And, and I haven't seen him watch, seen him swim in person since nationals where i was very impressed and so it's 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 a treat to see him well thank you thanks for having me yeah, that's so our cool. pleasure so <laughs> that's Bill, billy dowdy from dart swimming so usa swimming has done a lot um throughout not just locally they go all over the nation to really try to bring a lot of diversity into the sport and with june being pride month we wanted to kind of highlight what usa swimming is doing to bring a lot of lgbt athletes to feel safe in this sport I know for, for me as someone who was, you know, a closeted kid growing up in the sport, I really struggled with that and sometimes swimming became a very unhealthy outlet. Um, and to me now working in the sport where we have, you know, uh, rainbow lane line stickers and, um, you know, diversity inclusion guides where coaches are being aware of these things, it just makes me think, wow, if I'd had this when I was younger, um, what would my experience in the sport have been like and how could it have been different? And um, just to know that, you know, if there's a, if there's a, a kid in the LGBT community that is, um, you know, swimming right now and, and doesn't know if this is the place for them or if they have a place that content that we're putting out from our headquarters even, um, it's important for them to see that this sport does have a place for them and they do belong here and, um, you know, that the USA Swimming is an inclusive environment. So welcome back here to the Clovis North High School Aquatic Complex where you're watching Deck Pass Live presented by Xfinity. Again, the pool is pretty quiet now and um, 
I just I know you were talking about Caitlin like you don't usually swim very much but you want to get in because <laughs> it's so I do want to get it's, in it's, I see Rowdy getting ready to get yeah, in I'm Rowdy like I think I, I need to go race in. Rowdy right now yeah we're going to be getting in a little bit to cool off and I know you said yes I'd probably I'd, I'd break my rule and get in to cool off I know it sounds nice it is really nice in there uh, so as we've been talking about here in Clovis we want you guys to help us pick the best race of the year, male and female, from the entire Tier Pro Swim Series. So we're going to recap some of that a little bit. So here are the two nominees we have for the female race of the year. One of them is going to be Annie Laser from the 200 Breaststroke in Bloomington. Yes. And then Reagan Smith, also in Bloomington, that amazing 200 backstroke where she almost broke her world junior record. And it's hard for me to pick, and uh, we're going to show you a little bit of Annie Swim where she swam the fastest time in the world for 2019, making this really big comeback. And here's how the PA announcer, Kevin Cargill, called it at the end of that race. Final turn under our belts, and it's all Annie Laser in the 144 range at that final turn. Escobedo trying to track down Lily King. Can Lily King hang on to second place, or is Escobedo going to take the silver? No question on who's going to win it. And she's going to take this event for the third time in a row. That's going to be Mission Viejo's Annie Laser. 220. 77. Not only is that a best time for Annie Laser by north of two seconds, that's the fastest time in the world this year. So we were both there in Bloomington. I think we were both just shocked as Annie. I did, literally just got the goosebumps, and I've already seen this like three times. It's just her reaction and to hear her fastest time in the world and just knowing what she's gone through, and she you know, almost gave up and had some speed bumps and then got back into it right. and going best times. You know, I, it. This is why sports are so cool. It you is. know, I love stories like this. And I thought, Jeff, I thought that race is going to be a little bit more competitive. I was like, oh, this is going to be a good race. Yeah. It was a great race for Annie, but I, I guess the right word was a more competitive race. Right. You saw, I mean, that was a commanding lead. Yeah, and I think Lily King is is fired up her training partner. And, yes. you know, it's going to be a very competitive 200 breasts at Olympic trials next year. Yeah. But more interestingly, is Annie's going to swim this 200 breasts at Pan Ams. Okay. Lily's going to do it at Worlds. Okay. And we got a couple other swimmers who are kind of in the, in mix. the mix. Michael Summer role as well so mm -hmm. they're all going to be trying to jockey to say they're the fastest American right. this year gosh if you do that I mean you're going to become the second fastest performer in American history and kind of push that 220 barrier which is kind of golden right now well I mean let's talk on both sides though like the Americans are on fire on brushstroke yes. right now I, when you're talking about Brandon earlier I'm like I'm already thinking in my head all the strong males that we have and then we're seeing all the strong females it's like we're doing something right in the U.S. with our brushstroke yeah yeah all right so male race of the year we got a couple of very prominent names first off we have Caleb Dressel from that come from behind victory in the 100 butterfly at the Des Moines meet in March and then Cody Miller with his amazing return to the top of the rankings and the 100 breaststroke in Bloomington. And so if you want to vote for the male race of the year and the female race, race of the year, you want to go to USA Swimming's Facebook page. You'll see the two polls there. You tap on the one that you want. And on Saturday evening show, we're going to bring you the results of who gets the male and female race of the year. I'm kind of excited. I kind of have my own little thoughts on who should win but I don't want to yeah, influence don't, anybody yeah, no influencing. I don't want to influence anybody <laughs> it's as I think I checked this morning it's still pretty neck and neck Ooh, so make sure you vote make sure you vote <laughs> all right so that's going to do it for today's show we got a great lineup for tonight let's take a quick look at the schedule we got a lot of great races the first race of the night I think is going to be really good we got the 200 butterfly the men is going to be highlighted by the hometown hero Justin Wright mm -hmm. and as well as Luke Orlando right. who talked with his coach so they're both going to be gunning for it and Justin you know he's going to world championships and this, I think this is his last chance to do a good 200 fly before he goes off to training camp so I think he wants to do well for the home crowd we got a great 50 freestyle Hunter Backstroke, the gentle giant Matt Grievers is going to be in there. 200 Breaststroke's going to be fun to see if Brandon Fisher can do something great there. Kelsey Dahlia, Louise Hansen, Kendall Stewart going to be battling it out in the women's 50, 50 Butterfly. And then that 400 Freestyle, we're going to look at Trey Freeman in that yeah. men's race. He had a great prelim swim. He had a swim. great prelim swim. We're going to see if he can go under 349 to nine finals. And that particular race is going to be on Deck Pass Live. You're not going to be able to see it anywhere else. <laughs> Here. So at seven at six thirty p.m. Pacific time, go to usaswimming.org, and you're going to see 
me and Rowdy nice. calling that foreign freestyle. Rowdy. That's going to be a, yeah. I, I'm, <laughs> what a I'm really honored to be able to do that. <laughs> so You'll hear, we'll hear you, yes. but you'll see me. Yeah. <laughs> Kayla will still be down here on the desk, and I'll join her a little bit later after that. So, again, we're going to have a lot of fun on that. And, again, we're going to have a good guest on. We're going to have Justin Ress. He's going to be talking about getting himself ready for international competition. And uh, so you don't want to miss it. So, NBCSN for all the races. Men's foreigner free A final here. Justin Ress, we got a lot to talk about. You don't want to miss it. And we'll see you then.